Hi friends, today we are going to see the past year need questions for the chapter Biotechnology and its applications and today in this video we are going to cover part 2. So let's begin with the first question here which was asked in the year 2009. What is true about Bt toxin? So what does Bt stand for? It stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a bacteria. About Bt toxin it is true that it is innate, it is an inactive prototoxin or you can call it as protoxin. Okay. It gets converted in the active form. When will it get converted into an active form? See, it is it is an inactive form, but getting converted into an active form. So it happens in the intestinal gut. Okay, there are several advantages in expressing the Bt toxin in transgenic Bt crops. The level of the toxin expression can be very high, thus delivering a sufficient dosage to the pest. So it is an inactive prototoxin which gets converted or which becomes active when it is ingested by the insects and where is it getting active in the intestinal gut the toxin expression is contained within the plant system and hence only those insects that feed upon the crop perish so you can understand the difference here it is not targeting anything which is not related to uh, you know one which one which doesn't consume it so only when the ones the pest which goes selectively consume on it they will die so it's targeted therefore the right answer to this question is option d next question here the bacterium bacillus thuringiensis is widely used in contemporary biology as it is dash so what is the main purpose we are using this as a bt bt crops we have a lot of bt crops now what are they transgenic crops first of all the bacterium bacillus thuringiensis is widely used as in contemporary biology as a in favorite insecticide okay so this bacterium if you see it's a gram it's a gram positive bacteria okay it's a soil dwelling bacteria of the genus bacillus bacillus thuringiensis produces a parasporal insecticidal crystal protein which when targeted for certain organisms or certain parasites or pest whatever you can call it as will be killed when it is ingested when this toxin is ingested therefore the right answer to this question is option a next question here main objective of the production or the use of herbicide resistant gm crops is to dash so we have to analyze the statements here it is to eliminate the weeds from the field without using manual labor wrong eliminate so it's not the it's it's not the usage of eliminating weeds to encourage eco-friendly herbicides okay to reduce herbicide accumulation in food articles for healthy safety for health safety option d is the right answer Main objective of production or the use of herbicide resistant GM crops is to reduce the herbicide accumulation of the food articles. So when you make changes and when you give an alternate use, you don't have to use herbicides because you're already resistant. So you don't have to give anything artificially. Therefore, it becomes a safety one to be consumed. GM plants has been useful in many ways. Genetic modification has made crops more tolerant to the abiotic stresses that reduce the reliance of the chemical pesticide enhanced nutritional value to the food that we consume so now we understand why do we use this or why did gm crops come into uh, error therefore the right answer is option d next question here cry endotoxins obtained from the bacillus thuringiensis which is bt it is effective against dash very easy question because we already discussed in the earlier part of the chapter so as I said this bacteria if you see it's a gram positive bacteria and that too it is a soil bacterium okay and it works on targeted pest and it's usually in the inactive form only when it goes to the intestinal gut the pH of the intestinal gut will make the toxin active mode and kills the pest so these cry endotoxins which, has up, which are obtained from the bacillus thuringiensis are effective against ball worms a ball worm is common term for any larvae of the moth that attacks the fruiting bodies of certain crops, especially cotton. Therefore, the right answer to this question is option D. Next question here. The name of Norman Bollock is associated with dash and this question was asked in the year 2005. Okay. The term green revolution refers to a very substantial increase in the yield obtained by breeding high yielding varieties of crops under intensive application of fertilizers, irrigation and pesticides. The worldwide increase in productivity has come along with with the fact or with the name with Green Revolution for which Dr. Prolong won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970. So it is a Green Revolution which is option B. Next question here. 
Bacillus thuringiensis Bt strains have been used for designing novel dash. So as I already said, it is targeted for pest. So it is obviously not metallurgical mineralization and fertilizer. It is not to increase the fertility. It is to kill the required or the targeted pest. Therefore, the right answer to this question is option D. Especially the one that is in high use. If you see, it is Bt cotton. Uh, where you'll have uh, a predominant pest which will eat on the flowers or the plants of the cotton. So that is uh, very prevalent. And now after this bacillus thuringiensis, it is controlled to some extent and we have good yield from cotton. Therefore, the right answer to this question is option D. Easy question, right? Next question here. One of the most important reasons why wild plants should thrive is that they are good sources of dash. So we have to analyze the statements here. They have they are highly nutritive animal field wrong, unsaturated edible oils wrong, genes for resistance to disease and pest. Yes, obviously the answer is option C, because um, uh, you must have seen. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to give you an example here. You must have seen uh, the people who are exposed to a lot of uh, pollution. Uh, I mean, they go out every day. They ha they have a lot of access to the other things. Uh, at one point of time, they become resistant. The genes will um, get accompanied. I mean, it will get itself accustomed to that way. Now, imagine you're putting in a baby who is born and you take the child out. What happens? Immediately, the child, the, she doesn't, he, she or he doesn't have that resistance, right? So, here, one of the most important reasons why wild plants should thrive is that they are exposed to a lot of, um, lot of changes, and lot of conditions which happen around them they might face conditions where there's no water they might face conditions where there's no proper sunlight there's no proper food so they undergo every kind of situation in their life but imagine the plants that you grow in your house you somehow water it you keep it in a place where's where there's a lot of sunlight so they, they are pampered so this question is very easy and it is understood also the answer is C because genes for resistance to disease and pest is highly required Therefore, the right answer to this question is option. Wild varieties have genes which are resistant to disease or pest. And that becomes, that is, you know, a factor that is they are blessed with. Therefore, the right answer is option C. Next question here. The first human hormone produced by recombinant DNA technology is DASH. Very easy question which was asked in the year 2014. Any idea what it is? Yes, it is insulin you see more people with i mean they are suffering with diabetes now and there are people who uh, use tablets and there are people who use insulin also on their daily basis so insulin is a hormone that is secreted by the body naturally but now you get it in uh, artificial forms and you inject them in the body and that is because of this recombinant dna technology mammalian hormones were among the first produced prepared bacteria by the rna that is recombinant DNA technology. It is a human insulin and human growth hormone, which are the examples of this technology. Okay, next question here. Which one of the following vectors is used to replace the defective gene in gene therapy? Okay, so we have four options here. We have cosmid, RI, TI plasmid and adenovirus. The right answer is adenovirus. Adenovirus is usually a non-enveloped one. Okay, it is not, uh, you know, covered, I mean, I'm sorry. It's non-enveloped, it don't have a proper coverage. It's a non-enveloped uh, double-stranded DNA virus which causes respiratory disease. Adenovirus is usually a vehicle to administer a targeted therapy in the form of recombinant DNA or protein. Specific modifications on the fiber protein are used to target the adenovirus to certain cell types. A major effort is made to limit a hyper... Uh, hepatotoxicity and prevent the multiple organ failure. So, which one of the following vector is used to replace a defective gene in gene therapy? It is option B, adenovirus. Okay. Yeah. Next question here. The first, the first clean clinical gene therapy was given for treating dash. Okay. Uh, we have four options here: chickenpox, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and adenosine deficiency. So gene therapy is an extreme ex is an experimental technique that is uses or that uses genes to treat or prevent diseases. 
the first clinical gene therapy was given for treating adenosine D uh, minase def deficiency. That is, uh, you have the history here. A four-year girl became the first gene therapy patient on September 40, 1990 at the NIH Clinical Center. This deficiency is also called as ADA deficiency or you have different names also. What is this disease? If you see, it is an autosomal recessive metabolic disorder that causes immunodeficiency in the patient. This deficiency is due to the lack of enzyme which is adenosine D minase. Therefore, the right answer to this question is option D. Next question here. Continuous addition of sugars in fed batch fermentation is done to dash. Very easy question. You have to, you just think what could be the answer here. It is obviously not going to come under sewage or methane. So it should e either be B or C. A fed batch fermentation is a biotechnological batch process which is used or which is based on the feeding of growth limiting nutrient substrate to culture so it is done for purifying enzymes so you well you very well know um, jams or sugars i mean uh, content with uh, sugar high sugar or salt they don't get easily spoiled that is because of the high salt or the sugar content so the same thing they use here it is to purify the enzymes okay it doesn't allow the other microbes to grow on it therefore the right answer is option c next question here Ultrasound of how much frequency is beamed into the human body for sonography? Okay. Ultrasound imaging has a frequency range about 1 to 15 megahertz, which has become a part of our lives in the last decade. We are, not, we are all now familiar with the blurry black and white sonogram. Uh, you must have seen how the pictures come. They are usually black and white, right? You've seen how they come, right? Uh, they show the unbob. Uh, you must, uh, especially pregnant women, they would have undergone sonography where they see their unborn baby inside the mother uterus. Also, although it may take a little imagination from our part to understand the round circle or what the baby's head is and all that, you have to analyze and see because they're just black and white images that you see, and um, it's 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 a blurred vision. I mean, you don't get exact picture of how you get in cameras. But it's a blurred image that you can get and you so it's it's actually a happy moment for a mother because she happens to see the baby that is one thing so the megahertz used is 1 to 15 megahertz okay next question here maximum application of the animal cell culture technology today is in the production of dash very easy question again this question was asked in the year 2003 um you have to analyze because interferons, insulin, edible proteins, but major application comes in vaccines because that is something that we predominantly and everybody has to use it. While the rest of the conditions only when the patient requires you use, but this vaccine, if you see, it's the major application that everybody uses it. Therefore, therefore, the right answer to this question is option D. Next question. What is true about monoclonal antibodies? Mono means single. Monoclonal antibodies are identical molecules specific for one type of antigen. They are obtained by injecting the target antigen into a rat or a mouse. Sometimes later, the spleen cells producing these antibodies are isolated and fused into the myoloma cells to produce monoclonal antibodies. So I have given you an introduction of what is monoclonal antibodies. Now analyze the statements. They are antibodies obtained from one parent for one antigen. They are antibodies obtained from parent for two antigens. So, no, they are antibodies that are obtained from one parent and that too for one antigen. You are specific. Therefore, the right answer to this question is option A. Okay, now you understand? Right. So, with this we complete the uh, part 2 of biotechnology and its applications. Hope to meet you in the next part of the same chapter. Thank you.